Over a year after Illyrio welcomed the Targaryens into his home, Daenerys is betrothed to marry Khal Drogo of the Dothraki. As Viserys presents her with a wedding gown gifted by the Magister, he strips her naked and fondles her under the pretext of examining how she has grown. After he leaves, Daenerys enters a bath that her servant warns her is too hot, but it does not affect her. A short time later, Drogo arrives at Illyrio's manse. After taking a brief look at Daenerys, Drogo rides away without dismounting his horse. Viserys is concerned, but Illyrio assures him that if he did not approve of Daenerys, they would have known. After their departure, Illyrio and Viserys discuss the quest to sail back to Westeros, and Viserys inquires when the wedding will take place. Daenerys is not pleased with the arrangement and blurts out that she does not want to marry Drogo. Viserys insists that Daenerys will marry him, because, in return, Drogo will give Viserys the army he needs to retake their father's throne from Robert Baratheon. Viserys adds that he would let his sister be raped by all 40,000 of Drogo's men and their horses if it meant getting his throne back. At the wedding, she accepts a variety of gifts. From Illyrio, she receives three dragon eggs from the Shadowlands beyond Ashai. The Magister tells her that they have been turned to stone by the passage of time. Sir Jorah Mormont, a knight of Westeros, brings books about the Seven Kingdoms and offers Viserys his service. She is given a white mare by Drogo. Daenerys says the mare is beautiful and wants to thank Drogo, asking Jorah what the Dothraki word for, thank you, is. Jorah tells her that there is no such word in their language. On their wedding night, Drogo forcefully takes the tearful Daenerys's virginity. While traveling to Vise Dothrak, Jorah notices that Daenerys is struggling to cope with Drogo's sexual appetites, giving her dried horse meat to eat in order to keep her strength, telling her of the Dothraki ghost grass theory and telling her that her marriage will get easier. Later, as Drogo has violent loveless sex with Daenerys, her attention becomes fixated on her gift from Illyrio. Becoming increasingly curious with the dragon eggs, Daenerys asks her handmaidens if they have ever heard of dragons surviving in the east. They reply no. But Doria, a former prostitute from Lys, tells her an old story about how there used to be two moons in the sky. One wandered too close to the sun and cracked like an egg, spilling out thousands of dragons into the world. Daenerys's Dothraki handmaidens Eri and Jiki dismiss the story, saying that the moon is a goddess, wife to the sun. Daenerys seeks advice from Doria, trained in the pleasure houses of Lys, on how to best please her husband. Doria teaches Daenerys how to use her sexuality to influence Drogo and win the status of an equal in his eyes. Eri teaches Daenerys to speak the Dothraki language. While traveling further eastward, Daenerys commands the Kalasa to halt, and wanders into a glade. Viserys, enraged at the idea of being commanded by his sister, then attempts to renew his control over her, but Ricaro defends her from his attempts at violence, stating, through Eri's translation, that he should take an ear from him to teach respect. At first, she begs her men to spare him, but at an encouraging stare from Sir Jorah, she grows confident and orders them to spare Viserys, although he is shamed by being forced to walk. Daenerys discovers that she is pregnant with Drogo's child. She assuredly predicts that she will have a son, to Drogo's approval. The pregnancy buoys the love between them. Arriving at Vise Dothrak, Daenerys asks Jorah if he thinks the Dothraki could retake the Seven Kingdoms for her house. Mormont points out the difficulties of persuading them to cross the Narrow Sea, but believes success would be possible if that could be accomplished and if King Robert was foolish enough to meet them in open battle. He says that if their opponents retreated behind stone walls, the Dothraki would not be able to root them out. They move to discuss Jorah's background, and he admits to selling poachers on his land as slaves to raise money for his expensive wife. When Daenerys asks him where his wife is, Jorah replies that she is with another man in another place. Daenerys invites Viserys to dinner, and provides fresh clothing in the Dothraki fashion for him. Viserys reacts angrily at being dressed in the rags of savages, and strikes Daenerys. However, for the first time in her life, Daenerys fights back, hitting Viserys across the face with a heavy gold belt. As her astounded brother gawps at her, Daenerys furiously reminds him of her position as Drogo's wife and the mother of his child, finishing with a threatening promise that if Viserys raises a hand to her again, she will have both of his hands cut off. Unbeknownst to Daenerys, Jorah sends word of her pregnancy to the spymaster Varys in King's Landing, where King Robert orders her assassination. 
Daenerys studies her dragon eggs. Despite Illyrio's claim that they are now only stone, she ponders if they might be hatched by extreme heat, and places an egg on a brazier. Nothing happens. To her disappointment. As she removes the egg from the brazier, Iri enters her tent and hurriedly takes the egg so as to not let Daenerys burn her hands, but while Iri does suffer burns, Daenerys is completely unharmed. Daenerys eats the raw heart of a stallion before the eyes of the Dosh Kaleen, the Dothraki wise women, and names her unborn son Rago in honor of her late brother Rhaegar. The Dothraki crones prophesy that Daenerys's son will be the stallion who mounts the world, the Karl of Karls, who will unite the Dothraki into a single horde that will overrun all the lands of the world. Viserys is overcome with jealousy that Daenerys has won the love of the Dothraki. When he attempts to steal her dragon eggs to buy his own army, Jorah stops him, prompting Viserys to taunt Jorah with what he perceives as Jorah's intentions toward his sister. Later, Viserys arrives drunk at the feast and draws his sword, demanding that Khal Drogo pay the agreed price for Daenerys by providing troops for the invasion of Westeros. He wants his crown or he will take Daenerys back. When he threatens Daenerys and her unborn child, Drogo executes Viserys by pouring molten gold over his head, a crown for a king. Unfazed, Daenerys notes that Viserys was not a true dragon, as fire cannot kill a dragon. Daenerys tries to convince Drogo to invade so their son might claim the Iron Throne, but the Dothraki do not trust ships and water their horses cannot drink. Now that Viserys is dead, Drogo does not feel inclined to honor the bargain. A wine cellar attempts to poison Daenerys to fulfill Robert's orders. She is rescued by Jorah, who initially intends to drink the wine to prove a point, but then offers it knowingly to the wine cellar himself, and Ricaro. Following the assassination attempt, Drogo reverses his decision and swears that he will lead his forces across the narrow sea and seize the Seven Kingdoms in blood and fire. To raise funds to hire the ships necessary for this endeavor, Drogo leads his Colossa into the lands of Lazar, the Lammen. They seize loot and slaves that they can sell. Daenerys is appalled at how the Dothraki treat their prisoners, particularly the women, and wins them better treatment. One of Drogo's riders, Mago, objects and challenges Drogo to combat. Drogo easily slays him but sustains a chest wound. One of the women Daenerys has saved, Miri Mazdur, tends to the injury. The Kalasa marches southwards to the edge of a great wasteland, but Drogo's wound festers, and he falls from his horse, a grave sign of weakness amongst the Dothraki. Dua continues to treat him but thinks his wound is fatal. Daenerys convinces her to employ magic to save Drogo's life, which the other Dothraki object to. However, Dua undergoes blood magic, stating that only life pays for life. She then begins chanting, ordering Daenerys out of the tent, as Miri cuts the red's throat. Ser Jorah kills one of Drogo's blood riders, Kotho when he tries to intervene. Daenerys is injured in the altercation and goes into labor. Jorah takes Daenerys to Dua for treatment, as the Dothraki midwives believe Daenerys to be cursed. The Kalasa then separates due to Daenerys and Drogo's indisposition. According to Dua, the child is stillborn and deformed, with leathery scaled skin, wings and a stomach filled with grave worms. Dua saves Drogo's life, but leaves him in a vegetative state. Dua admits she did this deliberately in revenge for the sacking of her village. The ritual that saved Drogo drew its power from the death of Daenerys's son, causing her child's stillbirth and monstrous appearance. Daenerys is distraught. Distressed by the lifelessness of Drogo, Daenerys tries to stir any sign of life in him but cannot. She is forced to accept he will never truly be alive again, remaining in a vegetative state, and must smother him with a pillow to end it. She constructs a funeral pyre for his body. She places her dragon eggs on it and ties Dua to the Drogo's funeral pyre, to be burned alive in revenge. Jorah believes that she means to die and tries to persuade her not to. Daenerys gives a speech to those of her Kalasa who are left. She tells them that they are free to go, but if they stay with her she will lead them to a great destiny, then she steps into the blaze. The following morning it is revealed that she has survived and three newly hatched dragons are clinging to her body, the first three dragons in the world in a century and a half. Jorah and the remaining Dothraki fall to their knees, proclaiming Daenerys their queen and leader.